Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bonnet Break. Delighted to be doing the first tutorial of 2025. This is going to be a two-parter. We're going to be exploring glass and transmissive materials in Redshift. This is going to be off the back of the abstract glass shader I created before at the end of the year. If you haven't seen that, please go check out the Bolt and Break store and have a look at it. And if you don't want to spend your hard earned money, that is absolutely fine. This two part series will look at how you can get a base start in creating something like that. Please like, subscribe, comment, all those good things. We're going to get started on this. And this first part is breaking down the basics of creating a transmissive material and different techniques you can use. Without further ado, we are going to look at our scene. Um, we're using a redshift camera at a focal length of 50 millimeters. If we come out of our camera here, you can see I am using four lights, which is a little bit unorthodox, but it just gives me control of how we can get different looks. I also, in the scene, have this bust here, which is inside the sphere, and this is to show how glass is working and how the light is passing through the object. Let's create our glass shader. Let's create a standard material and put this onto our sphere. Select your standard material and bring the weight in the transmission panel up to one. Okay, so there's a couple of things to run through here. The color will basically tint your glass to look, you know, towards that specific color. The more saturated your color, the more work Redshift has to do to pass rays of light through it. The lighter your color, the less work has to be done. So in renders, sometimes if you're trying to get light to pass through dark, saturated colors, it can be take a little bit more effort or um, rays to pass through. That's where like trace depth comes in quite handy. Use this kind of in between right now. And then you have your depth and this basically tells Redshift it's going to apply a unit and that unit tells Redshift how much light is allowed to pass through this transmissive object. And if we put that to one, that is going to be really, really dark. So it's, it's not allowing a lot of light pass through. If we put to, this to 10, it's allowing more light pass through. So it's absorbing more light, but allowing a little bit more go through. If we put that to 50 lots more light is going through and we put that to a hundred which is a lot it's really scattering the light inside the object and it's allowing the majority of the light to pass through and then you have this extra roughness which does what it says it's you could bring it down to a minus parameter which makes it super shiny or you can bring it up to one where it makes it a bit more foggy and condensed and then if you change your depth that again have a different look to your object and then you have your scatter color here and the scatter color basically allows redshift to scatter a different color within the glass and um, based on the parameters of the depth so it's kind of a mixer it just allows a little bit of extra control great for you know if you want something stylized now we have this dispersion parameter and this is interesting because this basically tells redshift to allow shifting of light based on the parameter of the IOR. We're going to get into the IOR in a minute. The IOR is currently set to 1.5, which is glass. That's what you use for glass. The lower the dispersion uh, value, the more variance in how the light travels once it hits that transmissive material. A parameter is confusing you, or if my explanation is confusing, a good thing to do is right click and show help. And usually cinema will show these examples. You can see here, if it's set to zero, there is no dispersion. 0 0.01 to one, you're going to get a lot of dispersion. And then one to five, you get some dispersion, but it's limited as you go further up. Let's set it to 0 0.01 and see if that kind of does anything. It does, it's not doing maybe what we expect it to. So let's bring that back to white uh, and maybe bring our depth back to zero. And that is just pinging the light everywhere. So you're getting <laughs> weird green. Bring it up to one. And there you get something a little bit more interesting. Bring the extra roughness to zero. And there you can see it's almost like a chromatic aberration in a sense, but you're just getting a spectrum of wavelength happening once the light rays hit the glass. It's a really nice effect. In some cases, it can work really nicely. If we put this to 0.5. You probably yeah you get way more of it so the light is kind of 
being distorted a little bit and you get that dispersion. Dispersion works really well. I think the default value for glass is 10. You get those nice caustics sometimes when you add dispersion. So that is something definitely worth noting when you're doing a transmissive material. Uh, the color you use will affect how the dispersion works. The lighter colors are probably better to use if you're going to add dispersion to your material. Okay, so let's maybe set this back to zero so we can see how other parameters affect the material. IOR, very important. So IOR is the index of refraction. It basically tells Redshift what type of material you are trying to recreate. There's an amazing site called Pixel and Poly. And it gives you all the IOR values for, I mean, the majority of materials that exist in the world. There's maybe a few here that don't if you're going super niche. But I mean, you have vodka, titanium, Teflon. I think it even gives the IOR for an eye. Yes, for different parts of the eye. So this is really handy to use if you're trying to recreate something really specific. Um, and this does matter because it will change how the light bounces once it hits the object it will change then the direction of the light wave and it will change how the light wave exits the object we're going to keep it on 1.5 because that is the default for glass and there is probably one more thing i'm going to leave you with and that is the weighting of transmission we're going to use a max on noise here and we're going to plug that into basic properties transmission and weight and this is can be quite handy so if we went to wavy turbulence we up the contrast let's up the contrast here you are waiting where light will pass through the object if you go back to your standard object go up to the top and change the base color you are now kind of having two objects on you having a base layer of diffusion so you can plug a color layer in here maybe even mix another object in here and it gets really really interesting really fast because you have lots of elements that you can pull together the last thing is your roughness in your reflection uh, and this will affect how transmission works so that's the basics we're going to look at more advanced techniques in the part two remember to like subscribe all those good things thank you for everyone who has watched this tutorial and please check out the abstract glass pack on the bolt and break store thank you and goodbye